In this operating system class, we will see the conditions for resource deadlocks. That will come under the deadlock characterization from the textbook and this is the unit 4 deadlock chapter. And in today's class, we will see the necessary conditions for deadlock and resource allocation graph. The deadlock situation can arise. The following four conditions hold simultaneously in the system. So, which are the four conditions? First one is mutual exclusion. And second one is hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. If these conditions arise in any of the computer system, then there is a possibility of deadlock in the computer system. First, let us see the mutual exclusion. In the system resources, at least one resource must be held in non-shareable mode. Non-shareable mode means only one process at a time can use this particular resource. Okay. For example, this is non-shareable resource. Only one process can utilize this particular resource at a time. Suppose if another process P2 wanted to execute simultaneously this particular resource, then this P2 have to wait until this resource been released by this process, current process. Okay, because this resource is non-shareable resource. The second one is hold and wait. Here, the process must be holding at least one resources and the same process waiting to acquire additional resources and that additional resource is currently being held by some other processes. Okay, here we are having the process P1 P1 is already holding the resource R1, but this is waiting for R2, but R2 may be already held by some other waiting process. Some other waiting, this, this may be assigned to some other waiting process P2. Okay, so this situation is called as hold and wait. That means the process is holding one resource and it will be waiting for some other resources. The next one is no preemption. No preemption means the resource cannot be preempted. That is, once the resource is allocated to a process, then the resource will not be preempted in between. That is, the resource can be released only voluntarily by the process which is holding it. After the process has been complete its task, then the process will release this particular resource. Then only the resource will be allocated to some other process. Okay, so this is called as no preemption. No preemption means the resources cannot be preempted in between the execution of some other process. And last one is circular weight. In the circular weight, for example, we are having n processes in our system and all the processes are waiting process. That means the process P0 is waiting for a resource. This resource is actually held by P1. And P1 is waiting for the resource which is already held by P2, etc. Up to the Pn-1 which is uh, waiting for the resource which is held by Pn. And Pn is waiting for a resource which is held by P0. For example, here we are having 4 processes and 4 resources. Okay, P1. The process 1 is waiting for resource uh, R2, but R2 is held by P2. Okay, P2 is waiting for R3, but R3 is held by P3. And P3 is waiting for resource 4, and the resource 4 is wait, held by P4. And this P4 is actually waiting for, waiting for resource 1. This resource 1 is held by P1 actually. So, this is called a circular weight. Here, see, uh, two processes are there. R1 is assigned to P1 and R2 is assigned to P2. But R1 is waiting for resource 2 which is already assigned to P2. And P2 is waiting for R1 which is already assigned to P1. Right? So, this is called a circular weight. Up to this, we have seen uh, the conditions for resource deadlock. The necessary conditions for deadlock are the mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. Okay, in the next class we have, we will see the resource allocation graph in detail. Okay, thank you.